Hello everyone, this is Code Metaphor. Um, so, um, I came um, to computer science from a totally different field which had nothing to do with computer science or mathematics or anything. Um, but uh, it took me four years uh, to understand. So I thought, why don't I share my learning with others? Um, so uh, <clears throat> the concept will be totally different. What we are going to use is not uh, try to do the coding in terms of teaching you a stat or just syntax or anything. I'm going to be using Python, okay? And I'm expecting that you have uh, a little bit background in, in, in programming, no syntax, no the, uh, the structure of the code and the lines and everything and how the code is implemented and how the IDE works when using visual code, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, as I'm recording this, um, one of the main focus will be um, I don't want to waste your time. Um, in the sense that um, if we do something, if you watch this video, uh, if you don't learn anything uh, from the video, then there is no point. I mean, I'm going to be making videos and nobody's learning. So that's my failure if I cannot deliver the message, okay? So when are we starting? Well, we are starting right now, right away, okay? So the two very fundamental concepts in programming okay the pointer and a variable if i can sum it up for myself it's going to be coding is a combination of pointers and the variables okay so now what is, now i'm going to give a brief overview like what is a variable okay a variable is just like in mathematics okay we say x is equal to five in maths okay in mathematics, we generally think, well, x is equal to 5. x is, has the value 5. And then somebody gives you an equation, y is equal to x plus 1. And if x is 5, y is equal to 6. Just like the same concept, but here is a little difference in computers in, in, in the world of programming. When we say x is equal to 5, what happens? Something magic happens. You can just call it magic happens. And 5 goes into memory in a block. It now everything will have an address if we don't have an address that means we, we, we're going to be lost okay now x is pointing to the value of 5 x is holding that address where 5 resides that's why when i ask print x the compiler what does it do it gives me print 5 on the screen now this is a print python function i'm going to be reviewing these topics and trying to brush up I'm not going to explain the concept. You can, there are tons of tutorials or books or anything that you can access. Just, you know, this is a print is a Python function that prints value to the screen. Okay. Now, the second thing is this equality sign. This is a pointer. Okay. Which means now you can imagine this is an arrow. It's like this. If I do like this, this is a comment. Okay. So it's like this. X is pointing to what? To the address. So imagine this is the address that 5 resides on. So we can say, let's suppose 1200 East Grand. Just imagine it like that, okay? 1200 East Grand is holding a value 5. Just think it in this terms. Because, I, I mean, next time I'm going to try to also draw it for you. But just imagine somewhere here 5 exists in the memory. What happens is it has an address. And that address, x is pointing to that address. Python also has a function called id. It tells you that specific address. Now, if you say print id of x, boom, it prints you this address. Okay? So, I think it should be very clear. Now, what happens is, how is it going to help you right now? Just think of programming language as... As, as Legos. That's why I named the channel uh, Code Metaphor. Okay. Now, how is go how is it going to help you? What's going to happen? What you're going to do with initiating variables and stuff? Okay. Now, this is what we are going to do. This is one part. 
The second thing we have something I'm going to go quickly through these topics and then as we solve let's suppose sorting or some other algorithms we are going to see what's going on. <clears throat> now we have data structures one of the fundamental most most important topics in computer science in programming. To my understanding if you want to know how to code you must know how to use data structures. Okay for example we have arrays now you can say well in python list and arrays are the similar things i can say my list you can name your variable anything you like my list is now pointing do you see that my list is pointing what am i i'm going to ask the computer give me an array so i'm going to say one two three four five okay now python is in python the type of the variable python understands it by itself now what's the type of the variable just like in real life let's suppose I have apples how many apples I have I have five apples okay five is an integer okay now let's suppose if you what's your name my name is this so that's a string value right so you can have an integer value float value string value any kind of value just the float is the type of that variable this this uh, this uh, x variable is an integer how do you know for example code just tells you x is an integer you see this x is an integer okay python also has a function which is called the type so if i say x is equal to type of x it tells me it's from class integer what happens in python everything is an object and that's one of the best thing to my understanding what python has done imagine everything to be an object okay now this is my list let's not make it complicated okay array or a list is what uh, why what's the problem why, why can't we use variable the issue is that I need many values to be in one in one spot what happens is if I can if I need 10 values of X and I have to initiate it every time it's time consuming that's why we came up with the concept of array or a list it is a consecutive set of values okay you tell the computer hey give me this specific block of values and it gives it to you and then guess what now my list is pointing to this 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 whole specific array now see what happens okay when we say print x uh, not x print my list you see what happens it prints the whole array as an object okay now if I if you want to access the individual elements okay so that's it you just have this and then print uh, my list of zero boom it tells you my list of zero you can say my list of five boom uh, we don't have five you know why because zero one two three four indexes of the, of the list on an array starts from zero so I can say not five I can say four boom it gives me five but now if I want to print individual elements of these values uh, wh what I'm going to do I need a pointer just imagine it imagination is one of the most powerful thing that can help us to understand programming just think about it now just think in real life how are you going to how if somebody asks you hey print me these values how are you going to do this imagine these are boxes you got to go to every single box right now what happens is this is exactly what's going on in computers in programming instead of you we cannot send myself to in in the computer so I send a pointer that's what's going on in for loop so when I say for I you can you know this is a for Python for loop format I I initiated myself let's suppose for myself in my list in length of my list length is a is a function length of my list what I wanted to do now my list what is this my list is um, my list is uh, is a, myself this is a pointer I'm gonna go to each and every box I'm gonna go to 0 1 2 3 and 4 now see I can say print what print my list I'm gonna access the array element every time it's gonna change myself and you see what happens now see what happens int object is not a triple let's see uh, for myself in 
length of my list right okay print my list of myself let's see what's the issue here uh, for myself yeah we we missed something here you see range is a function in python okay we have to say in range of the length of it, that my list i want you to take me start from zero and take me all the way to the end of these boxes and then you can say well now print it now you see one two three four five all right now this is a very simple concept here uh, <clears throat> we're going to use these concepts later on and trying to uh, metaphorically give it sense okay now uh length everything has now, now, now see just like in real life this is a list it will have a length if i say print the length len is the python built-in function my list boom just imagine if i comment these out let's comment them now see what happens the length is five one two three four five so that's exactly what we wanted right so i mean i can i can run it as many times as, as i want it's a very short program okay um so th these are called iterables iterable data structure okay and in the same way we have linked list we have trees we have a dictionary which is one of the most fundamental things that we will go through later on um, but um, uh, if we can if we don't think about these topics if we don't really focus that okay what am what am i going to do with these with these tools yeah i got a variable i know how to print i know how to initiate an array i know how to pre initiate a set or a dictionary i know a for loop i know a while loop now what's going to happen now i mean it's useless right now if you just if i tell you oh now you know how to code then 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 it's not the point we have to think about these topics okay now we are going to go to the thinking part and the rest of the things i don't want to waste time on just you know syntax and all these kind of things i'm sure that you have understanding of these very simple concepts, but just you know to brush it out now let's go and code insertion sort this is a sorting algorithm okay and I'm sure that uh, many of you will even know about insertion sort. So, for example, you're given five numbers. Let's imagine five, four, three, two, one. What happens? I'm expecting you, the output of the function should be one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So, how, how, how are we going to do this? Let's see how insertion sort works, just like in real life. We will, we will take five, compare it to four this is one thing and if five is greater than four what happens is that i'm gonna i'm gonna replace five with four so actually the first iteration will happen in which way you're gonna be pretty amazed now i know my condition is met five is greater than four so it will be five five three two one and then the next iteration why does it happen why do we wait for the next iteration see there is still work left you know why because this is the keys what we are comparing we are comparing five with this is how insertion sort was developed somebody thought about it this is how he created the insertion sort these are the keys we are going to compare five with every key but then what happens i'm going to compare four or three or two with uh, the previous value also because just imagine if, if here i have a bigger value than four then i don't want to put four there so that's why i don't so let's go let's go code insertion source so for example so this is how you initiate a python function and that's why i'm i'm saying that the best idea is that as we move this is what you have learned this is not the intelligent part of the code you can have a cheat sheet or anything that you want just place it in front of yourself boom couple of days you're good so define insertion insertion sort okay 
we have an insertion sort function ready right now what is going to get i'm going to give it a list just like in mathematics this is now a function what we did in maths remember in algebra and anything else we have f of x equals to x plus one this is exactly the same thing because f of x is expecting the value of x or you can write f of x is equal to, as y is equal to x plus one so this is the same thing this is f of x f of list it's expecting a list this is the input value okay now what we're going to do what are we going to do is we got a list right now just imagine that this list came in here okay i'm going to initiate a list here in a comment section name it five five four three two one okay and um so the list just imagine that the list went into the function this is the very first step what are we going to do the next thing this is where we think oh my god what happened what am i going to do right now nothing think the very first thing we need a position we need we need uh, uh we have to read all these values right so what i'm going to do is read it's a list right away for loop for i in range of what the length of my the length of my list boom now it's another section is done we can now read the array five four three two one right now what happens now i have access to five four three two one now what i want i want my key and i know and this is because the what is the code the code is what we are thinking the computer is not smart the computer is fast we are fast we are smart i have thought about insertion so this is how it's going to work and that's how it comes in there okay now i'm going to say that okay my key is equal to what uh list list let's name it my list okay just because of that okay my list of i okay now here is one thing more we are missing we are going to start because we already know that i'm going to start from five five is the one i want to compare to everyone right so i'm going to start it from one because i want my keys to start from one four three two one are my keys i'm gonna compare each of them to five and compare each of them to the previous values also okay and this is how it's gonna go now we have access from one index one is four two three four which is four three two one my key will be my list of i you know how for loop works every time i will initiate a value i will start with one come here i'm gonna explain now okay now we go another thing i i want a position 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 equals to i call the position equals to i, I minus one okay now see what happens why because i know my key is at index one and i'm standing at index zero so actually every time this is going to be i minus one and that's that's our setup right now we are good to go okay now what happens now there are our conditions my condition is that i will only swap the values i will only swap the values if if five or four or my key is less than five and then there is another condition also added in insertion sort that my position should be greater than or equal to zero that's it you don't have to now you will have another question while i will write while position is greater or e is greater or equal to zero and this is a python word and and uh, what does it mean i'll tell you and my key my key is less than what what should my key be less than right now position is in as a value right now position is i minus one which means zero 
so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my key is my list of position what now see how amazing is that look at that I created a condition now you're going to say hey why do you use while loop how do I understand that why don't we use if and this and that yeah we have thousand of questions I know but imagine why are we using while loop because see we are doing this process multiple times I want to do this to the end of array and I want you to keep uh, checking this condition even if you make a simple move keep checking this condition okay now we are ready what are we ready so for example now for I came to one right now what happens is when I came to one how will the code come it will come here it will come here my key will be appointed position will be appointed just imagine they are like point they are like arrows okay and now the condition will be checked now here the condition is fulfilled because our position is greater than zero and my key is also less than the my list of position which is five right now if that is true what we do we say my list in my list position plus one should be equal to what my list of position you see and I'm gonna tell you what happens here now what, what we did we said my list of position plus one position is zero plus one is this value point this value this this index one value should now be equal to index zero value that's why it becomes five okay this is one thing and then I also want you to position minus minus one this is how we write in, in, in Python position minus one right and then if for some condition this fails what you got to do my position position plus uh, uh, my list maybe this should be my list yeah my list of position plus one should be equal to what should be equal to my key and you will understand why okay now see this is our function is ready guess what now I can just return what return my list now we're gonna run this function and give it a value see if it works insertion sort I'm gonna say hey um, here is my list I can do anything here is the point okay now I can say um, here uh, now x can be anything right f of x is equal to x plus one this is the same thing I don't have to name it my list this is that thing I can name it anything like anything list equals to five four three two one this is my list and I anything list and put it here now see you will have more what work question oh where is the output boom look at that why didn't it work Let's see. Okay. Now we are running this. Uh, anything list is 54321. And then we give insertion sword. Okay. Now, what happens is, see, one, um, let me do something. Print, uh, let's, let's, get, let's get rid of these things. So we have a clarity of what's going on. Now see what happens. It didn't say anything. Why? What happened? Yeah, it will not because insertion sort, we said return my list. We didn't say print my list. This is the difference between return and my list. What does return mean? I can put an, this in another variable, result, and then I can say print result and you see now what happens boom we have one two three four five right now we can check more let's suppose six four seven two eight say uh, six four seven two eight yeah let's do that this one okay boom two four six seven eight we got the accurate response okay now see 
I want to do something else to show you guys um, how how actually the function is running and this is where we really really have to understand this thing okay let's now debug this okay run a debugger python file okay well I did a mistake here I have to select a point okay now run python file now see what happens you see here you're gonna see all the values okay now I'm gonna go forward okay so insertion sort got anything list you see here we have anything list six four seven two eight and then forward coming back got it got the value now for I you see I is initiated I is one right now because we ask it to I is one now you see what happens now my key my key is four because my list of I which is one my list of one is four here the index one is four and then position you see position is now at zero because we call we ask it to do I minus one now you see the line is now here this is how co compiler reads the code now it's gonna check this condition you see now position is greater or equal to zero yes it's equal to zero and then and both of these conditions should be true this is what the and means my key is less than my list of position what is my list of position do you see position is zero so my list of zero is what five yes this condition is true that's why it's gonna go to the next line now you see it's gonna go here and you see now six six four became six because we said it my list of position plus one which was index one value is equal to my list of position which is index index zero value but where is four well four we didn't lose it because we have it in my key now see what happens now position will be minus one now position became minus one because zero minus one become minus one now this condition will fail why because now position both of these arguments are not true position is now what happens is position is not greater or equal to zero it's less than zero so it's gonna drop from this line comes to this line boom now imagine just how you can imagine it that you are standing now here you're standing here and now I'm telling you okay this is minus one position so I'm telling you now if you if you the condition is failed what I want you to do make the next value equal to my key so that's why my list of position plus one when I do that remember this six becomes four right now four now that's it one iteration is complete now we go to the second iteration the second iteration is I become two my key is getting position we got pos condition is check condition failed boom again 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 position is checked confirm goes make changes again position is checked confirm again and then again and then fails boom and then I become three okay fail now I become now is the end of the list and boom in return so now we have two four six seven eight and that's the output of the function okay what happens is you see here in whenever the code came to return statement it means that's it it's the end of that that function okay now what happens you see it's going to come to for loop this everything is happening within this for loop okay so that is the function uh, that we have and then the code complexity and all these things we're going to talk about them later on but first let's talk about um, what we can do how how this is helpful um, did you understand something so this is a very simple algorithm and you should be able to uh, to this is a Python I'm going to review this for you again this is a Python uh, definite when you say def something def f of x this is the input value this is the function name this is how you define a function okay now um, you see uh, with just using variable for loop and while loop and the return statement we made 
we developed a complete and coded a complete algorithm um, called insertion sort it's used for sorting okay and then there are variations in insertion sort that we will gonna um, do it another day I'm gonna upload more videos about it so uh, the, the, the main thing is this code how the code is implemented okay that's where we are we get very confused oh how I'm gonna do that where I'm gonna place everything nothing you got a list you got to read the list from where I know because I have already said to myself that's how insertion sort will be and I want computer to process large amount of data for me and I start from one to the end of array these are my eyes I want these are my keys so my key is equal to my list of I position is equal to I minus one this is the condition that you have so you have four you have five what is the condition that you want to change this we said when four is less than five means when my key is less than my list of position you make your swaps change your position and if this condition fail I want you don't go here you see there is a space here that is part of while loop it's gonna drop here and when the for loop is done it's gonna drop here you see even the visual code visualizes it in a very no uh, nice way uh, so um, so that's it guys um, this is for today and we are gonna come back I'm gonna come back with another algorithm and day by day I think uh, you guys will get uh, more uh, of how these um, these structures and data structures and everything works okay now before going uh, let's assume let's assume that um, now here we can use um, here what you should do is uh, take an array take an array and um, um, put all the keys in that array okay now you see what happens is if we do like that and I'm, and I'm gonna be with you just you know um, just to tell you why is it necessary okay I can initiate let's suppose if I initiate it here what happens my keys list equals to I, I initiated an empty list right now whenever I get my key I say well uh, my key list my key list dot append what dot append my key boom and now I can um, well um, uh, let's see uh, let, let me let me not do that let me just uh, return um, my my key list my keys list let's see what happens okay now what happened is that it uh, it returned only uh, the last key right it returned only the last key but we want it uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, list of the keys now you should um, I'm gonna go back what you should do is you should try how can you put um, edit the code and try to put this even even if I even if I do this that okay um, even if I do if I say print my keys list you see eight and then uh, none okay um, it's not it's not coming let's suppose you can also do something with yourself and let's return my list something yourself here that before going into for loop I say print my list okay well not my list let's print my keys list okay now what happens boom uh, you, you, the first time was four then seven then two then eight okay now uh, what you should do is um, put these keys put all of them uh, in the for loop but um, so this is one way now uh, just imagine that um, if we initiate this in here as a global value everybody will have access to it now see what happens 
you see every time the length of the array kept increasing it input 4 then 7 then 4 7 then be 2 then 8 then 8 that's it okay so this is this is one of the practical use I wanted you to do it but then um, I said well it's okay so um, now if I return my key list let's see what happens okay so you see it's going to return my key uh, 4728 okay now so think about it use this um, this uh, array data structure uh, try to put the keys try to put the i index values and, and just play around with the code but before anything most important and fundamental thing is thinking about it think about the code think about the value of i think about how this while condition is applied and that's it it's that simple thank you so much and i will see you guys in day two have a very good evening